们家房子会走，他可以看到我们哦。哦耶！ So you're holding it. Oh. Yeah, I was so happy to be gathering here <laughs> and uh, you know to give you our birthday blessing. You're seeing many, many good friends, I'm sure. So okay. this time because of COVID nineteen, yeah, we are limited in number. <laughs> <laughs> So today, so to see us. any other day, so you, together, yes. you, have you, you have organized this event and you have requested me. So since the first time I visited Taiwan, I have felt I've been feeling Taiwan and Taiwanese very close to my mind. <laughs> and many of the friends are my good friends, old-time friends, I think it means. So to visit different places, uh, of course, I have to uh, depend on many circumstances, different but in my mind, everyone in Taiwan, young and old, are in my mind all the time. And today, we are meeting online, and I have uh, uh, and, I, and I'll be giving teaching on the eight verses of mind training by Langri Tangpa, Geshe Langri Tangpa. And this text is a short text on the training of mind for the altruistic spirit of enlightenment. Uh, Basically, these eight, uh, this text called the eight verses on training the mind has its um, uh, source or ba is based on the uh, Master Nagarjuna's uh, Ratnavali, the, in which there are at the, towards the end of the text there are 20 verses. Where it says that it's just like the uh, elements like earth and so forth, uh, may I become a sustenance or enjoyment for limitless sen sentient beings and so forth. And as, as long as even a few uh, sentient beings uh, remain without uh, reaching enlightenment, may I re uh, remain until then. For their sake, even after my enlightenment, um, so these Nag uh, Master Nagarjuna's uh, Ratnavali or the precious garland has these uh, verses, and these are the basis for the eight verses of mind training. And in Tibet, after, uh, after uh, Master Atisha Dipankara Shijana came to Tibet, um, the teachings on training the mind were brought then. Before that, Master Shanda Rakshita, who was a, a top scholar of Nalanda Monastic University at that time and was a follower of Master Nagarjuna, so he came, and then afterwards, Master Atisha came to Tibet, and he, the followers of Master Atisha were known as Kadampas, which means taking even a single letter of the scriptures into the uh, practice and path. And so Master uh, Langri Tangpa, well, his, whose real name was Dorje Singe, was someone who practiced bodhicitta all the time. And so, and he, because of his practice of bodhicitta all the time, he was also said to 
cry all the time because of thinking of um, the suffering of sentient beings. And he was therefore, because of his crying all the time, he was known as the Langri Thangpa, who had a very stern, um, a sad face and always crying. And so, today, I will give you the explanatory transmission of this text, the eight verses on training mind, training the mind. Regarding Bodhicitta, for the last 50 years or so, based mainly on Bodhisattva Charya Avatara, I have been reflecting on uh, Bodhicitta all the time, but I never remain um, and uh, can maintain a serious face like Langri Thangpa himself. Because in the Bodhisattva Charya Avatara itself, it is mentioned that you should invite our sentient beings with smile. And so, because of that, unlike Langri Thangpa, who had um, a serious demeanor, I practice bodhicitta all the time and also recite this text on a daily basis, these the verse, eight verses. So, of course, I am a follower of Langri Thangpa himself, yet I always smile and laugh. So this is based on I have a source for being um, having this kind of a jolly face um, uh, in uh, Bodhisattva Charya Avatara. So wherever, wherever you look at, all sentient beings are, I consider them as my friends and have affection and compassion towards them. And to, on top of that, it is uh, coupled with the understanding of the, uh, uh, the view of emptiness, and therefore this gives me peace of mind. In in the Bodhisa, Bodhisa, uh, in Madhyamaka Avatara by Chandra Kirti, at the end of the sixth chapter, it is mentioned that you, uh, the, the bodhisattvas use the two wings of understanding of the emptiness and bodhicitta. Uh, fly, the swans, the uh, kings of swans of the bodhisattvas uh, fly to the other shore of the ocean of the qualities of Buddhahood. And so because of this practice of bodhicitta, as it is said in the Bodhisattva Charya Avatara third chapter, today in front of the, the, uh, the, um, the uh, protectors of all beings, I invite all sentient beings to their state of sugatahood and um, in the meantime to the temporal, temporary um, uh, happiness. And therefore, um, gods, demigods, and as uh, others should be joyful. And therefore, so because of the practice of uh, Bodhisattva, I uh, always remain peaceful in my mind. So in, uh, in front of today, in front of all the protectors, I invite all 
beings to the state of Sugadahood, the Buddhahood, and in the meantime to the temporary happiness. Therefore, gods and demigods be joyous. And so I wonder when I think about the, the tantric deities having very fierce look, uh, uh, whom do they actually uh, show the um, wrath? And so, this text on the uh, eight verses is a practice a text for the practice of bodhicitta. And so, to uh, the, the beginning of the text, uh, the, the first seven verses show the bodhicitta, the practice of bodhicitta, and then the last verse where it says, may, I, may all these remain undefiled by the stains of eight mundane concerns, and so forth shows the practice of the view of emptiness. And so, the first verse, I, for the benefit of sentient beings, all sentient beings, when you think about, when you come across this word I, you should think who you are, where am I, what am I. So, when I get up in the morning, I reflect on this verse from Mulamadimaka Karika, where it says, uh, not uh, the aggregate, it is not the aggregate, nor separate from it, it is not in the aggregates, nor the aggregates are in it, it does not possess, uh, the Tathagata does not possess the aggregates, what else is the Tathagata? And so I switch the Tathagata with I. So not one, not different from the aggregates, not in the aggregate, and not, I'm not in the aggregate, and who am I? So Every day when I wake up, I do reflect on this verse and try to search for this I. So you cannot, when you try to search for the identity of the I, you cannot find anything that you can point your finger at. <clears throat> and so as it is said in the uh, Madhyamaka Avatara, when you try to search for the uh, self in these seven different ways, in the sevenfold, through the sevenfold reasoning, uh, you cannot find anything that you can pinpoint as being the I or the self. But the I does exist, the self does exist by way of uh, uh, the designation. So, here, why do we do this kind of analysis is because, um, because we have, uh, the, we, we create or uh, develop this um, inappropriate mentation, thinking of an independent I, and on the basis of that inappropriate attention or uh, thinking, then the uh, destructive emotions such as attachment, anger, and so forth arise. As Master Nagarjuna's Mulamadimaka Karika says, then uh, attachment, anger, and confusion arise from this kind of uh, an inappropriate thinking. And the inappropriate thinking also arises because of the uh, fundamental ignorance about which uh, holds on to some kind of independent existence. In this. And also, Master Nagarjuna's same text says that um, the uh, karma and delusions arise from this kind of conceptions, and they in turn arise from the fabrication, and that is ended by emptiness. So when you think of yourselves as I mean, yourself, I am this, I am Chinese, I'm Taiwanese, I'm Tibetan, I mean, of course, when you try to try to search for that I that you that, uh, uh, think of as if it is the 
uh, it is governing or ruling over your body and mind. Where is it? I'm talking to you now. Where is that I that you think uh, of um, as the listener or to my speech? Of course, it is not the case that the I or the self, yourself does not exist. But the, what, what you have to understand is that when you have a sense of an I, there is this sense of an I which is independent, concrete, independent from the body and the mind. That kind of I or self does not exist. And so because of this notion of an I which is independently existing, we have an, an inappropriate mentation. And because of that, because of that kind of a solid, independent existence of an I, you have the inappropriate mentation, and that in turn gives rise to attachment, anger. And so the sense, the notion of an independent I is the basis for our negative emotions, these mental afflictions. And so if you are able to reduce that clinging to the I, then it will help to reduce your anger, attachment, and so forth. And uh, consequently, the, uh, it will reduce the problems that uh, we create in the world. So when you look for the I, search for, search whether this I exists or not, and you have to be able to come to the conclusion that this independently existing I is not there. And therefore, in Buddhism, it is considered very important to, uh, to use logic and reasoning to um, delve into the nature of things. So in the Pali tradition, of course, they mainly um, use scriptural quotations, uh, whereas in the Nalanda tradition, the Sanskrit tradition, um, uh, which we as uh, Tibetans and use uh, uh, the uh, people of Taiwan and uh, the Chinese uh, uh, ethnicity also uh, follow this tradition. So we all are followers of the Nalanda tradition, and uh, particularly the follower of Master Nagarjuna, the great glorious master. So we call uh, him Longsu Pusa. So as follower of followers of Master Nagarjuna, regarding the profound path, stages of the path, which is based on the ultimate reality, we have the texts such as Mula Madhyama Kakarika and uh, Madhyamaka Avatara by Master Chandakirti. And so these two texts, Mula Madhyamaka Karika by Master Nagarjuna and Madhyamaka Avatara by Chandakirti are the two main, the, 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 the uh, supreme texts for understanding of emptiness, the ultimate reality. And I always keep these two texts on my desk, on my table. And so that is uh, with regards to pertaining to the profound path. <clears throat> for which is for attaining the wisdom dharmakaya uh, at the Buddha stage, when you reach the Buddha uh, stage of Buddhahood. And then, and so with regard to the view of emptiness, <clears throat> Through this understanding of emptiness, you'll be able to understand that the delusions that are within us can be ended. As it is said in the um, Mahayana Uttara Tantra, that all of us have uh, the Buddha nature. So when you think along these lines of um, Madhyamaka uh, text, then you'll be able to find that it is possible that uh, I can, I can uh, overcome and um, 
the uh, mental afflictions completely. As it is said, uh, these are um, adventitious. And the quality of clarity and cognitive nature of the mind is um, uh, naturally within us in the mind. Though the self does exist, and everyone who has a sense of an I or self, uh, they uh, are same in not wanting suffering, but wanting happiness. And suffering and happiness have to do with mental uh, states. And so it is mainly, uh, it has mainly to do with these uh, happiness and suffering, uh, have mainly to do with our mind. And uh, the, with regard to uh, happiness, uh, the mental uh, happiness is the uh, uh, most significant. And so the followers of Master Nagarjuna and Nalanda tradition must uh, know that it's most important to transform our mind. So the root of our happiness is in the mind itself. So today, the world is mainly attracted towards external development, but except for the Indian uh, traditions, I mean, which is the only tradition where we use the mind for or to, to uh, gain, attain happiness, whereas other traditions mainly are based on praying to a creator God. And so by transforming our mind and seeking happiness through the transformation of my, our mind exists only in the Indian tradition where there is a teaching of non-violence, non-harming, which is based on karuna or compassion, great compassion or compassion. And so for these have existed in India for the last at least 3,000 years. And Buddha, Shakyamuni Buddha, the historical Buddha, also practiced these Indian traditions. And after attaining enlightenment, from his own experience, he taught the view of selflessness. And he mainly uh, emphasized reason and logic and not just scriptural citations. As he said, monks and uh, learned ones, just as gold is tested by burning, cutting and rubbing, likewise you should examine carefully or thoroughly examine my teaching and my words and then accept it, not because you have devotion to me. And so he, the Buddha himself has stated or uh, uh, told us that we should check his teaching and then through our examination, when we find some teaching true and then also beneficial to our mind to, uh, when we practice them, then you should practice it. In Tibetan, we have 100 volumes of the were translated words of the Buddha and over 200 volumes of the translated exegesis of the Indian commentaries. And so all these emphasize using logic and reason to make transformation within our minds. <clears throat> With regard to that, if we actually examine how uh, the, uh, these negative emotions arise in us, what are they? I mean, you'll be able to see that they do not have any sound basis, whereas compassion and bodhicitta and so forth have the uh, logical basis. 
and they can be increased through uh, and developed further and further through our practice. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the uh, strong attachment and anger and so forth do feel very strong, but when you try to look for their root, you'll not be able to find them having any sound basis. And therefore, these negative emotions and ignorance arise through confusion Whereas they may be very strong because of our habituation with them over countless lifetimes, and they do not have any sound basis and logic to prove their truth as such. Whereas compassion and, and a view of emptiness and so forth have a sound logical basis. And therefore, you can develop them further and further through practice. And so, when we talk about practicing the dharma, it's not just, it, it should not just remain at the level of prayers, <clears throat> as um, you Chinese uh, people do say, Amitabha, uh, pray to Amitabha, and so forth. But as human beings, since we have this kind of a unique brain, and unique intelligence <clears throat> with which we can actually um, examine what is right and wrong. And through this, through the help of this intelligence, we should be able to um, <clears throat> pierce through the um, uh, and negative emotions, and so with the determination to achieve the highest aim for the benefit of all sentient beings, which surpasses even the wish-fulfilling gem, may I hold them dear at all times. So all sentient beings are the sentient beings of the three realms of existence who do not want suffering but want happiness, and we also have the uh, connection over many lifetimes with these old sentient beings in the uh, universe. And so, <clears throat> do we do consider compassion and bodhicitta very precious, but how do they arise in us? They arise in relation to sentient beings who are suffering. So, with the sentient beings as our focus, since there are these sentient beings who are suffering, therefore, compassion can arise in us and also can, de can be developed uh, infinitely. <clears throat> so, the highest aim, to achieve the highest aim, with the determination to achieve the highest aim means uh, highest aim is the f uh, attainment of the four Buddha bodies. In, uh, based on these sentient beings, and with the coupled, uh, coupled with that of the view of emptiness, <clears throat> we attain that f uh, the four Buddha bodies. And therefore, you say, I, may I hold you uh, all at all them all at all times. And then the second verse, as it is said in the Ratnavali, the precious garland, where um, I quoted certain lines, and one of them says, um, may I be able to, may all the um, uh, sufferings of ascension beings fructify upon me, and may all the happiness and good uh, things of myself fructify upon all sentient beings. And so what we are thinking is helping sentient beings. And so in order, for, even when we do business, for example, we use some money and in order to, by, by, by uh, using that uh, capital money, we think of making profit. Whereas the negative and the sentient negative um, uh, emotions, the, the afflictive emotions, do not help us 
It only helps to increase the, 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 that of the uh, selfish attitude, this uh, extreme self-centered attitude only helps us grow uh, these uh, negative emotions within ourselves, whereas, and uh, because of that, we are always um, bound um, by uh, more problems. Whereas when we think about sentient beings, other sentient beings, and uh, even your suffering uh, becomes small. When Zwither I interact with someone, may I view myself as the lowest amongst all, and from the very depths of my heart respectfully hold others as superior. In all my deeds, may I probe into my mind, and as soon as mental and emotional afflictions arise, as they endanger myself and others, may I strongly confront them and avert them. So this is about overcoming our pride and arrogance, because that gives rise to more problems. Whereas if you hold yourself lowly, it helps. You, you respect others. And then, verse number four, so because we are so habituated with our negative, destructive emotions, even a small catalyst can um, give, uh, call, give rise to um, uh, a big uh, uh, destructive emotion within us. And so what you should understand is that these destructive emotions always ruin us. And in our day-to-day -day life, even in dreams, we should be able to check within ourselves whether these um, destructive emotions arise in us or not. And so these arise, negative emotions arise, uh, the, the problems are caused by our self-cherishing attitude and also holding on to some kind of a true independent existence in things. And because of that, if we familiarize ourselves with the positive attitudes, in all my deeds may I probe in my mind, and as soon as mental and uh, emotional afflictions arise, as they endanger myself and others, may I strongly confront them and avert them. And so, if you familiarize yourself with these, uh, 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 your mind, you'll be able to reduce these negative emotions. Of course, in Tantra, there is the practice of taking the uh, attachment into path and uh, also anger into path and so forth. But for that, you have to understand the general structure of the teaching of the Buddha, the common teachings. And so, in the tantric, through the tantric practice, we should be able to t use our uh, essential drops and use the um, wind and channels within ourselves. So we, get, we should, uh, you should be able to transform them. And so, through this knowledge and experience, then you'll be able to see the significance of the tantric practices where it is said that you use the, um, um, the attachment, anger, and enjoyments into the path, transforming them into the path. Otherwise, you, without understanding how you should do, you can do that, I mean, you may uh, misuse the tantra. So in tantric texts and uh, rituals, in, in one of Sakya Master's uh, writings, in his prayer to uh, Mahakala Shell, so he says that um, in order to crush on, uh, one's, one's enemies and um, take care of those who are on our side, so and so forth. So I don't uh, favor this kind of a praise to, to, dis uh, to crush those of our enemies and uh, taking care of those who are near and dear ones. So we, because we are so used to doing this in our life, it is even... Um, um, extended to 
the uh, Dharma protectors. So I don't really like this kind of a praise to Dharma protector. So when you have a very strong and powerful practice of um, uh, uh, controlling your uh, wind energies and channels and uh, the, uh, the vital drops, then uh, you'll be able to see the uh, the significance of these tantric practices. So without knowing the significance of tantra, you will uh, actually use the tantra for um, ruinous purposes. When I see beings of unpleasant characters and so forth, so generally you should, you should see sentient beings as pleasant, attractive, and, and have compassion and love towards them, but should not be tossed by, but you should not be tossed by our, your, uh, uh, the uh, attachment and anger and so forth. And so when the sentient beings are um, uh, uh, the tossed by these negative emotions, you should feel um, more compassionate and loving towards them. And when others, out of jealousy, treat me wrongly with abuse, slander, and scorn, may I take upon myself the defeat and offer to others the victory. So to all the mother sentient beings who are as infinite as the uh, space, you should have compassion towards them even when they provoke anger and so forth within your, uh, yourself. And so you should use that opportunity to increase your experience of compassion, love, and bodhicitta. And in the Bodhicitta, Bodhisattva Charya Avatara, it is said that the enemy is your teacher of compa uh, patience. So in order to practice compassion well, to, to be successful in the compassionate pra pra practice of compassion, you should have patience. In order to have patience, you should, uh, you, you, you would be able to practice patience when there are those who provoke you anger, you uh, who actually talk um, um, behind us. And therefore, practice comes because there are those who are the, who we consider as enemies who always think of doing something bad to us, talking behind us and so forth, backbiting and so forth. And particularly when someone whom I have helped or in whom I have placed great hope mistreats me in extremely hurtful ways, may I regard him still as my precious teacher. So those to, to whom you have helped, actually, ideally, they should be able, uh, actually the ones who should repay your kindness. But when they do something bad to us, of course, if, you, if we actually talk about a legal uh, system, when you have done something good to somebody and then the person actually Re re responds with negative attitudes and negative things instead of gratitude. I mean, you have some reason to um, uh, prosecute them as uh, or something like that, and whereas here you are saying uh, that you regard him still as a precious teacher. And so whatever, uh, whatever uh, virtues you have collected, you should dedicate them for the benefit of all sentient beings, and particularly those who are close to us, the, the uh, humans. <clears throat> and then in brief, may I offer benefits and joy to all my mothers, both directly and indirectly. May I quietly take upon myself all hurts and pains of my mothers. And then verse number eight.
May, I all, may all these remain undefiled by the stains of the eight mundane concerns, and may I, recognizing all things as illusion-like, so whether it's internal pra- um, experience of pain and pleasure or the external objects, all of them appear as if they have some kind of objective existence, independent objective existence. The quantum physics concept of quantum physics is quite an, um, in, uh, helpful where they differentiate between uh, appearance and reality. Apparent things appear as if they have some objective existence. Our near and dear ones and uh, the uh, adversaries and enemies and so forth do appear to us as if they have some objective independent existence, but if you if you actually search for their identity, whether they exist that way or not, they, they, you will not be able to find that. So be, because the so-called enemies and our near and dear ones appear as if they have some kind of objective independent existence, we grow anger or attachment towards them. Whereas if you go f- beyond that appearance and try to look for their existence, you will not be able to find anything being this and that. So the mental afflictions, the destructive emotions arise be- uh, on the basis of their appearance. It is very clear, though there is such an appearance of beings and things and so forth as if they have some objective existence, yet if you try to analyze them, for example, the beings into their body and the mind and then further into their parts and so forth, you have nothing that you can pinpoint as being this and that person and so forth. And therefore, they, on the basis of appearance, we grow attachment or anger and hatred. So this is clear. Some friends of mine have come to um, uh, notice that some quantum physicists have said that when you understand quantum physics and when you feel convinced about what quantum physics says, that there is no objective existence, it helps to reduce your um, uh, destructive emotions. And so what Buddhism says is that the negative destructive emotions arise on the basis of appearance uh, with the notion that the things have some kind of a solid, concrete, and independent existence in and of themselves. And because of that, the negative emotions arise. Whereas in the uh, the, uh, Madhyamaka texts, particularly like uh, Madhyamaka Karika, as I quoted the lines, nothing exists objectively. So when you are able to feel convinced that things do not exist the way they appear to me, and that helps to reduce that clinging to some kind of a solidity and uh, independent existence in things, and therefore things do not exist the way they appear to us, and therefore they are like illusions. And may I, recognizing all things as illusion, devoid of clinging, be released from bondage. And so the bondage is this, um, the clinging and the grasping at some uh, kind of a concrete, solid existence, independent existence in things. And therefore, um, <clears throat> devoid of that clinging, may I be released from the bondage. 
So for the bodhicitta, the conventional bodhicitta practice of it, uh, the uh, Master, uh, Master Shanti Deva's Bodhisattva Charya Avatara is the best text. And for the ultimate bodhicitta, which is the middle way view, Master Nagarjuna's Mulamadhyamaka Karika, the fundamental treatise of the middle way, and Master uh, Chandrakirti's Madhyamaka Avatara entering the middle way, and its auto-commentary are really um, great texts. And when you read these texts and reflect on their meaning, you even wonder how do these appearance, uh, on the basis of appearance, this kind of a clinging to some kind of an independent object of existence uh, happen to me. And so pay more attention to uh, Bodhisattva Charya Avatara by Shandikirti, uh, Shanti Deva and read it ma- more. It's really marvelous text for uh, practice of bodhicitta, particularly exchange, equaling and exchanging self and others. And in the eighth chapter, it uh, teaches, and then the sixth chapter, chapter on patience. So you should study these two texts more often. So it will help you. When I was in Tibet, I, do f- I, have, I had felt that bodhicitta, of course, is great, but it's very difficult to practice. But after, reaching t- after t- uh, receiving teaching on Bodhisattva Charya Avatara, uh, then I, I can say that I have some kind of an experience which, is, which comes when I put some effort in it. And so this happens to me. I cannot say I have this effortless uh, experience of bodhicitta yet. And then for the ultimate bodhicitta, the view of emptiness, Master Chandrakirti's Madhyamaka Avatara and Mule Madhyamaka Karika. So these uh, reasonings that Master Chantakirti uses are very powerful where he says um, that if things ha- were to have and some kind of a stable inherent existence, then, um, you know, uh, the, uh, the, uh, equip- the Arya beings, uh, wisdom, which is uh, the uh, equipoise on um, mass, the, the, that of the uh, ultimate, exist- uh, ultimate nature of things, uh, would be destroyer of uh, entities and so forth. And so these are very powerful reasons you should think, uh, reflect on. So tomorrow is my birthday. I have said that the best gift you can give to me on my birthday would be if you could recite Om Mani Peme Hum Mantra, the six-syllable mantra of Avalokiteshwara. So while you, res- you may recite the, uh, ver- the, this mantra from your mouth, but if your mind is distracted any- somewhere else, it would be like, you know, just uh, repeating money, 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 the English word, money, money, money. So in this mantra, Om is the beginning of the uh, mantra. It's made up of three letters, A, U, and Ma, which represents our body, speech, and mind. And on the basis of these three, body, speech, and mind, there is, an, there is a self or an I so at this stage, our body, speech, and mind are more or less used for, uh, are influenced by, under the influence, strong influence of destructive emotions, whereas through familiarization with the path, 
What will happen is these impure body, speech, and mind that we have as sentient beings, and which mainly the mind, so that the, the, they will be purified and you reach that of the mind of a Buddha and you become a Buddha Arya being. So on the basis of the pure body, speech and mind, there is the Buddha which is designated and on the basis of impure body, speech, and mind, we have sentient beings. And so how do you transform these uh, impure body, speech, and mind into pure body, speech, and mind at the resulting stage of Buddhahood? And so how does that process happen is uh, um, mentioned through the money and which is which represents that of the bodhicitta. And Padma is lotus which is wisdom, uh, symbolizes the wisdom, and hung means combining these two, bodhicitta and the view of emptiness. So hung represents or symbolizes this union of the bodhicitta and wisdom of emptiness. And so on my birthday tomorrow, 1,000, saying 1,000 uh, uh, times this mantra, 1,000 times, is easy, isn't it? And so you should recite 1,000, at least uh, 1,000 times each. So if each person could recite 1,000, 10 persons would make it 10,000, and then that would also multiply with more number of beings, 100,000 and um, million and so forth. And so if you could recite this mantra, I mean, of course you would be able to create uh, some uh, virtues within yourself. And so you would be practicing bodhicitta and as a practitioner of bodhicitta, uh, you, um, who practice the bodhicitta and the view of emptiness, and teach others as well. So through the merit that you have, you gain through the recitation of the six-syllable mantra, if you could recit, uh, dedicate it for my long life, of course, it would be helpful for me to remain, uh, if you could dedicate it for me to live 110 years, till 110 years, um, and it would be um, good for everyone. So as the political scenario changes, I may be able to visit Taiwan. I uh, hope for that, but it's difficult to say this at this point of time. But whether I physically am able to come there or not, my mind, a spirit, uh, in my spirit, I am with you. So please stay, stay healthy. Thank you, Your Holiness. Thank Be you so at much ease. for the precious teaching. Thank you. Which have been heard just now by a thousand participants here, plus 300 volunteers. Well, due to COVID-19, so we cannot fill the hall, and then we are all wearing masks, except for the two MCs, yeah? No. Oh. And, you know... <laughs> Okay. You can see uh, people, yes, you can see people also keeping very safe social distance. Okay, okay. We're so blessed to have you here with us. Oh. Thank you so much. And we, we would like to also...